This is not a test. This is the emergency broadcast system. Then I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll with writing on both sides and sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice, who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll. But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open the scroll or even look inside it. I wept and wept because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll or look inside it. Then one of the elders said to me, do not weep. See the lion of the tribe of Judah the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. I believe that the throne is a combination of Niagara Falls and the Horseshoe Falls. I believe if you can envision picking up Niagara Falls and setting it on top of the Horseshoe Falls, you would have Niagara Falls, which flows straight down, and then you would have the Horseshoe Falls, which is like this, and the two attached, it would become a seat. The horseshoe part and the back would be the Niagara Falls part. I believe that the scroll itself is the world map. And I believe that the seven seals are the seven continents. Now that the scroll has been opened, let me show you what's inside. The first thing that is found inside the scroll, well, there's four names inside the scroll. The first name that is found inside the scroll is Emmett Till. We keep the E from Emmett in the M. We take the M and we turn it upside down, it becomes a double U, which is nothing more than two U's. We keep one U, we turn the other U upside down, it becomes a lowercase N. We take the I from Till, the Roman numeral I, means one, the first letter of the alphabet is A. We keep the L and the L and the E. And we have the word Emmanuel. That leaves three T's left over, one, two, three. Emmanuel means God is with us. The three T's together, this means Calvary, the day Christ was crucified. The next name inside the scroll is Jimi Hendrix. Jimmy is another name for James. We take the first part of his last name, which is Hen, and we understand that to mean rooster. What is left over is D-R-I-X. We keep the D in the R. The I, once again, is the Roman numeral I here, which is the first letter of the alphabet, alphabet and it becomes the letter A. The letter X is broken down to its simplest form, which is two lines. Those two lines come back together, one line, two lines, giving you the letter Y. The second name inside the scroll is Jimmy Morrison. Again, Jimmy is another name for James. We take the two R's, one here, we face the second R backwards, we attach the two, and that gives us the letter N. So now we have the letters M O N. I-S-O-N. Now we take the M-O-N and we add it to the D-A-Y and that gives us Monday. We take the R, we add it to the I-S-O-N 
and that gives us risen. We take the rooster from over here and we put it there. We take the James and the James and we put it here and here. Risen Monday refers to the crucifixion because Christ was crucified on Friday and rose three days later. Friday to Saturday is one day, Saturday to Sunday is two days, and Sunday to Monday is three days. Rooster refers to the crucifixion because of that day Christ told Peter, you will deny me three times before the rooster crows. The fourth name that's contained inside the scroll is Janice Joplin. We're going to keep the J and the A and the S. We're going to take the N, turn it upside down, and it becomes a U. We're going to take the letter I, which is the ninth letter of the alphabet. We're going to turn the number nine upside down. It becomes the letter D. So now Janice has transformed into the word J-U-D-A-S, which is Judas. We're going to take her last name, which is Joplin, and we're going to keep the O, the P, the I, and the N. The leftover letters are L and J. L is the twelfth letter of the alphabet. The twelfth breaks down to one plus two, which equals three. The third letter of the alphabet is C. J is the tenth letter of the alphabet. When we take the line from the one, we add the zero on top and it becomes the letter I, which is the ninth letter of the alphabet. The Roman numeral I also means one. We subtract that from nine, that gives us eight, and the eighth letter of the alphabet is H. So now we add the C and the H to the O-P-I-N, that gives us Judas chopping. When someone's chopping something, they're usually chopping a tree. So Judas chopping becomes Judas tree, which is here, which also refers to the crucifixion because Judas hung himself from a tree the day that he sold Christ out. And so all these things here refer to the crucifixion. Now, since we know that we're talking about the crucifixion, we know that Monday, risen, rooster, Judas refers to the Christ, whom is Emmanuel, which is here. What's left over is James and James, which goes here and here. James being one disciple who was the son of Zebedee, and James being another disciple who was the son of Alphaeus. So basically what I'm telling you is that I've gone to the throne, I've gotten the scroll, I've loosed the seals, and I've given you the two men who are on the side of Christ the day that he is crucified. Now that I've given you the two men that were crucified on the side of Christ, let me try to give you the symbolism of Christ and the cross itself. We take Emmanuel, which means God is with us, and we take the first letters from each word. We take the G, the I, the W, and the U, and we place them here. We take the three crosses and we place them here. I know that cross contains two S's. And all three of these crosses must in some way, shape, or form fit into this word cross. And because it's singular and it means one. I know that this S represents that T, and this S represents that T, and the word cr cross represents the three as a whole. I take the G, the I, the W, and the U, and take the U and I turn it upside down, it becomes an N. And now I have G-I-N, which is Jen. I have C-O-T-T-W-R. I take the W, I turn it upside down, it becomes a W, which is nothing more than two U's. It becomes a U and an N. In case you got lost in that, let me, let me say let me say that again. Cross. The two S's become two T's. So now you have C R O T T. C R O T T. G I W U becomes G I N W. And because the U became a lowercase n. 
So now we have the word gen and C O T T W I. Pay attention. I'm going to say it one more time because I don't want you to get lost in this. Cross. The two S's become two T's. They represent the two T's. The three T's represent the cross as a whole. But all three T's must be explained. One T, two T's, three T's. They're all the same. Three. Really one. C-O-T-T, C-O-T-T, R, R, G-I-W-U, U becomes an N, so G-I-N-W. Take the W, which is two U's, you keep one U, you turn the other one upside down, it becomes an N. So now we have C O. T T U N G I N and the letter I. This has become this. We know that the cross means our Christ. And so if we have transformed the cross into the cotton gin, then the cotton gin must be symbolic of the cross. And if the cross is symbolic of the Christ, then the cotton gin must be symbolic just the same. So, Christ in the cross is no more than Therefore, Emmett Till must be symbolic of the Christ. And the cotton gin is symbolic of the cross. He who wears his crown.